Just keep walking. <laughs> Is that right good? All right, good morning. I am Darrell Jackson and I represent Richland County in the South Carolina Senate, Senate District 21. Let me begin by thanking Governor McMaster and his staff for this bill signing and to all of those that have worked so hard for this moment, would like to say a very special thank you. We are very proud of what has happened here in South Carolina with the Family Leave Bill. Um, I have often said that it is important, and Senator Sheely have heard me say this, that when we debate legislation that we do not debate faceless bills, which simply means bills with no faces with no people. We don't understand who it impacts. This bill was inspired by a situation here at the state capitol. In fact, in my office in the Gresset building, my administrative assistant, Ashley Stewart, who's here, was all of eight and a half months and weeks pregnant. Uh, very sick, but working. And I noticed that she would not take off. And I said to Ashley, please take off. You shouldn't be here. She said to me that, Senator, it's important for me to save up my days so that I can take off once I have the baby. And I then realized that we did not have family leave in South Carolina. And it wasn't fair for the Ashleys of the world or anyone else. And we began to work crossing the aisles, very bipartisan. Thank Representative Bernstein in the House, Senator Sheely, who really took a strong lead to make this happen. And we formed a coalition, Ashley, Leader, and others, uh, support groups uh, to convince the public and our colleagues that this was necessary. Thanks to the governor, we had a press conference to talk about fouling this bill. He pledged his support right away. We have accomplished something great with the family leave bill. However, I think it is important for me to say that the bill started with a 12-week family leave. Thanks to the House, you guys passed 12 weeks. It arrived in the Senate, and in order to get it out, Senator Sheila and I and others had to pray hard and cross our hearts and except six weeks, it is my desire that next year we would add those other six weeks. It's important that we add those other six weeks. The House did it. I hope the Senate would do it. Uh, it is my goal to file legislation, pre-file legislation, to add the other six weeks. And I'll close by saying this. I've heard our state been described as perhaps one of, if not the most pro-life state in the country. I would challenge us to be pro-quality life, total life. And one way to do this is to celebrate what we're doing here today and to add the other six weeks so that the quality of life in South Carolina can match our rhetoric. Thank you very much. Congratulations to everyone. I am happy that we are where we are today. Hello, my name is Beth Bernstein. I serve in the South Carolina House of Representatives. I represent House District 78 right here in Richland County. And it's my pleasure to be able to stand here and talk about the family leave bill. Um, it really is gratifying to, when you work so hard and you put so much in to an effort 
and you have a lot of support and then you actually see it come to fruition. And this is particularly sweet because it's going to be so impactful for so many families across South Carolina. And I'll tell you, this did not happen by chance. It took the hard work of many people who were dedicated in this effort to accomplish this result. And it wasn't just members of the General Assembly who are standing up here today. It's all of these other people whom you see standing here today and so many others who fought for this. We had organizations like REN, Women's Rights and Empowerment Network. We had the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children. We had faculty and other employees of the University of South Carolina. And we had so many mothers who gave personal testimonies and who crave for this release, relief. In, to, in today's political climate, all we can talk about is the divisiveness when no one wants to work across party lines. Well, I'd like to point out here that we have a Democratic House member, me. We have a Democratic Senator, Jackson. We have a Republican Senator, Sheely, and we have a Republican Governor, Henry McMaster, who all work together and remain committed to providing paid leave for our state employees. And I should point that in Richland County, point out that in Richland County, we have over 20,000 state employees right here in the county that we all represent. And this is a great example of putting people over politics. And I'd like to highlight briefly, and I, I know there are other speakers here, so I will do this quickly, but really highlight briefly some of the reasons why this bill is so important and why this should only be the beginning of our efforts. As Senator Jackson has already stated, I hope to also pre-file legislation and work with Senator Jackson again on providing as much as 12 weeks paid family leave for our state employees. And I hope that our local municipalities and our school boards will also follow suit so that our teachers and other um, county employees can also take advantage and be able to have paid leave. And the reason why it's so important that we provide this is paid leave supports baby's health. We know the time at home gives parents the time they need for well visits and ensure that their children receive all the necessary immunizations and are able, as we see with this newborn here, I mean, the bonding time is crucial. Breastfeeding is also made easier and we know that the ability to be able to breastfeed your children provides so many benefits for the newborn child. Um, there's a st statistic if 90% of the women in the United States breastfed their babies, and I understand not everybody can breastfeed, um, but the first, if they could breastfeed in the first six months of life, it would save the lives of 900 babies and 13 billion in healthcare expenses annually. Paid leave also supports outcomes for the entire family. Moms are healthier, longer leave periods are associated with health benefits for new mothers, including declines in depressive symptoms like postpartum depression, and um, it improves overall health. Families are less stressed about their ability to provide care. Preliminary data also suggests babies are safer by helping prevent child maltreatment perhaps by reducing risk factors such as parental stress and depression. And then paid leave policies support employees, employers, and our economy. Good beginnings mean reduced expenditures and more time at work when parents can attend to a child's early medical needs, infant mortality, and the occurrence and length of childhood illnesses are reduced, which in turn lowers private and public health expenditures, as well as the need for working parents to take time away from work. It also allows time to arrange for care, which means greater productivity at work. And our future workforce is well nurtured and better equipped. Positive, consistent relationships during a child's early years yield confident individuals 
who are better equipped for success in school and in life, paving the way for higher quality workforce and a strong economic growth. Paid leave contributes to reduce turnover and higher employee morale and loyalty. As you can see, this was long overdue. These benefits far outweigh any, any criticisms that um, people may have had at the outset. I'm not saying anyone did, but I do want to end by saying, Governor, thank you. Thank you for your commitment to protect our mothers, our fathers, and our children with the passage of this bill. It's a, it's a great bill. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Karen Wingo. I'm the State Director of Human Resources at the Department of Administration. And on behalf of South Carolina State employees, I want to thank the Governor, Senator Jackson, Senator Sheely, Representative Bernstein, and all the others who supported the passage of this bill. On behalf of state employees, we are excited for this bill to take effect in a few weeks. South Carolina state employees support South Carolina and promote the health, safety, and welfare of its citizens. Our employees work in diverse job functions, from law enforcement officers who protect the communities and promote security, to adult protective services caseworkers who protect our vulnerable adults, mental health professionals who provide counseling and case management for individuals with behavioral health or mental health issues, and our correctional officers who promote security and rehabilitation. We represent a diverse cross-section of jobs, but we are united in our commitment to public service. And this paid parental leave is a way to support those who've committed themselves to public service and to the state of South Carolina. And that support has never been more critical than it is right now. Like employers all across the nation, South Carolina state government is facing critical vacancies. For example, in June 2018, there were 7,153 vacant, what we call FTE, full-time equivalent positions in just our state agencies. As of this morning, that number was 11,840 more than 4,000 additional vacancies over the last four years alone. So helping South Carolina agencies recruit and retain quality employees is more important than ever. Because these vacancies are all across state government, but they're in critical frontline positions. For example, as of this morning, there were 404 vacant law positions in law enforcement classifications, 593 in our healthcare and nursing classifications. We need to do our best to support employees and quality employees in South Carolina state government. And while we have a competitive benefits package for state employees, until the passage of this legislation, we did not offer paid parental leave. And our working parents in South Carolina state government are a cornerstone of our ability to provide the services necessary to South Carolina citizens. I'm a working mom myself. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, so I understand how hard it can be to juggle that. I have done everything from kissed boo-boos and wiped runny noses, dried tears, given snacks, attempted to entertain children while balancing conference calls and meetings. I hope the governor has forgotten it, but even on one time, my then two-year-old decided it was a good time to yell into the phone while I was briefing the governor. I know how hard it can be to be a working parent and how important it is to provide that support so those employees choose South Carolina state government as their employer of choice. We are very excited about this opportunity for our employees. Just as a quick overview of what this will provide, for, families that give, that, for individuals that give birth to a child, this will provide six weeks of continuous paid parental leave at 100% their base salary. For individuals who are the co-parent of someone who gives birth, it provides two weeks of paid parental leave. So in the example, I've had both of my children while being in South Carolina state government. After the passage of this bill, after I get birth to a child, I would be having six weeks of paid parental leave. My husband, who's also a state employee, would have two weeks. If we decided to grow our family through adoption, this bill also supports families who give the gift of love, stability, and a loving home to children through adoption. By giving six weeks of continuous paid parental leave to the pri individual primarily responsible for the care and nurturing of the child, and two weeks for the other co-parent. And lastly, it gives two weeks of paid parental leave for foster parents. There are over 4,000 fo children in foster care in South Carolina, and this su provides support to individuals who open their hearts and their homes for children in foster care. 
We are excited about this benefit. We will be releasing the guidance on it on our website later today and sending it out to all of our state agencies. And I just want to reiterate our appreciation for everyone standing behind me today for their support for South Carolina State employees. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Senator Katrina Sheely. I am the Chairman of Family and Veterans Services for the South Carolina Senate. As my good friend Senator Jackson and Representative Bernstein have mentioned, this is a monumental step for so many South Carolina families. We all know the first months after birth are critical to establishing a firm foundation that will impact maternal and newborn health for decades to come. And paid family leave is so important to making that reality for so many families. This new law will help families in many ways, including the ability for parents to make sure their child has regular checkups and vaccines, as well as giving mothers time to recover, newly adoptive parents time to get to know their child, and for strong families, bonds to form. This will mean improved morale for our state employees and an added benefit that will, keep, that will help us become more competitive employer in the job marketplace. Of course, there is much more that we can do to build upon the success of establishing the first ever paid leave for South Carolina state employees. Because being a pro-life state South, should mean that we provide the best possible environment for children and families. This means enhancing access to health care, child care, nutrition assistance, early childhood education, expanding child tax credits, stronger child support enforcement, adoptive assistance, foster care board rates, family support services, and many, many other common sense policies. I look forward to working with my colleagues in the coming session to help ensure that every child and family has a real fighting chance to thrive and grow. It's now my great honor to introduce to you our South Carolina governor, Henry McMaster, for a few remarks on this critical step forward. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. There will be few. I'm not saying we're talking too long, but in the time we've been here, this little girl was wide awake. Now she's <laughs> sound asleep. <laughs> uh, th this is a great step forward. Things are always changing in our state as they are everywhere else, and things arise to the surface that need attention more than they did before. Sometimes we, we don't have money to address it, other times we do. There are all sorts of, of needs. But having strong families, of course, is the success, the key to our success in the future. And this will help us have strong families. Mamas and daddies need to be with their babies as much as they can. We know that. And we also have to protect them when they get a little older. We have to be sure they can be educated. That's why we've opened up four-year four kindergarten. They need to be safe at school. Uh, they need to, to have good food, they need to have safe neighborhoods, all of those things. And all of us here, I'm sure everyone listening or watching to this, is committed to those same things for our children. So this is a good step forward, and I thank all of those who have spoken and others who haven't that have paid a, played a critical role in getting this very big step, important step, make our state better. And now we'll sign the bill. We'll, we'll see what, uh, what the other priorities are. That's a good idea. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, as I said, there are always imperatives we have to deal with. It's always a question of money. But this is good. This, this bill, this law, is, is this policy is good for families and it's good for competition. 
we want to get the very best people that we can in working, serving our people in, in state government. I want to have the best public servants. And this, is, this helps us compete with private business and private industry. But more importantly, as everybody's noticed, it is it's for the families, because the families are the key to our future. But th those ideas as ex expressed by Ms. Bernstein and uh, Senator Jackson are, are good ideas, and we'll, we'll see how they progress. And I'm sure between now and then there'll be more ideas coming up. More questions? Yeah, we've, we've uh, addressed that before in various, uh, various forum, but uh, yes. What kind of policy would you want to see? Well, everything that you mentioned. Do you think the abortion debate should prompt more senators specifically to, and maybe move on the question for Daryl Well, then let's let Senator Jackson answer. <laughs> Senator? I would certainly hope so. As I said earlier, it is important uh, that if we are going to pride ourselves in being pro-life, it is even more important to be pro-quality life uh, because a healthy child means a healthy South Carolina. And I think anything we can do to improve the quality of life in South Carolina should be a priority. Uh, Senator Sheely, who is a great negotiator, uh, it, we, there was a time that we were challenged to even get six, and it looked as if that it may not even come out of the Senate with anything. Um, politics is the art of compromise. It is also the art of persistence. And so the compromise of last year does not negate the persistence of this year. So it has always been our goal to come back to add those other six weeks. But in order to be where we are now, we had to compromise. Okay. And I believe also the 12-week bill that y'all introduced did not differentiate between mother, father, biological versus foster, And also, this goes into effect on October the 2nd, and, and so we'll, ha we'll have some experience to also help inform everyone's judgment. <laughs> the October 1 start date allowed sufficient time for guidance to be put out to agencies and also to ensure that our state's personnel system was set up to be able to accept that leave type. Um, so it allowed that a couple months to ensure that our state agencies are ready to provide that leave immediately upon effect for employees. Would you like to see businesses, privacy, as 
Some businesses have such policies, others don't, but that, that's the question for those businesses. They know their employees, they know their customers, just as we know our employees, we certainly know our customers, those are the people of the state, but our, our employees are, um, we, we've had many years of experience with hiring, retaining, and getting the very best state employees. Each, each business has their own environment to work in. But allowing time for mothers and fathers to be with their newborn children is a uh, good idea. And it's, it's not a new idea, it's a very old idea. So we, we would encourage everyone to take a look at it and see if this idea suits them. I, I think perhaps and Senator Shealy could maybe give a more detailed answer if she desires. I think fiscal, the, the, the argument I heard was uh, the fiscal impact to the state, um, but that was perhaps before we gave great tax cuts and necessary massive rebates. And I did say necessary. <laughs> Thank you.